Today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the NECA Player Select God of War 3 Kratos, the Ghost of Sparta. Recommended for ages 17 and up. Uh, well, I guess before we have a look at the figure itself, we gotta have a look at this packaging, which is just incredible. One thing NECA continues to deliver on when they release these kind of ultimate release of these figures, they tend to give us, and especially the video game treatments, they tend to give us something that looks like the box art for the video game uh, the actual cartridge or CD. In this case, it would be a CD because we've got kind of a recreation of the PlayStation 3 God of War game case, which is really cool. And then on the front, we've got Kratos. It's one singular eye and you know the red deco on the over top of his eye area there. Down below, even listing Sony Computer Entertainment. As for the side of the box, well, we've got God of War 3, which carries over all, also onto the back. Kratos got a of Sparta Ultimate Edition action figure. In the end, there will be only chaos. Armed with his deadly double-chained blades, Kratos will take on mythology's darkest creatures to destroy Olympus and mighty Zeus himself. Bonus features, 31 points of articulation, two interchangeable heads, two blades of Athena, two Nemean Cestus, and the boots of Hermes. Down below, the product development, Randy Falk, uh, sculpt, sculpture, packaging, and photography. And then we've got some other cast of characters down by here as well. I can't I quite pronounce that name. Prototypes, Adam Smith. Special thanks to Sony. Paint, John Wardle and Jeffrey Trapp. And down below, www.godofwar.com. And then we've got some just product images. Now, these are the images of the actual figure. Even like up at the top there. That's not the game. That's the figure itself. And finally, some images on the side. And just before we wrap up the package end of the review, the inside shows you Kratos, as well as the figure itself, the multitude of accessories, and so much more. I can't tell you how excited I have been for this figure to be released. If you've seen anything from my previous reviews, you've seen that Spot has reviewed a lot of the NECA God of War figures when they were first initially out. Of course, those figures didn't have as much posability to them. When I found out that we were going to get an ultimate figure release of them, so very excited. That being said, Spot's going to take a break. I'm going to get this opened, and when we come back, we'll get a better look at the NECA God of War 3 Kratos Ultimate Edition. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Okay, so now that we have Kratos out of his packaging, let's get a better look at the figure which... I've been kind of playing with this figure for like the last 15, 20 minutes, and I'm still like looking at this in just sheer awe. I have been collecting like all the God of War figures from NECA as they've been released, and it's been a, a long time since we've seen a new God of War figure from NECA, and I almost feel like the wait has been worth it for what we now get here. They have called this line ultimate. I almost would call this line definitive. This is truly a definitive release of God of War's Kratos. Okay, so where do we start? Where do we start? Okay, let's look at some of the accessories and then we'll kind of have a look at the figure. Uh, first things first, we'll have a look at his blades. Blades of Athena. They are slightly different, and the reason why Spot's kind of pausing there for a second is they are a slight bit different release than the original God of War Blades of Athena which I believe were more solid plastic and they were painted, whereas these are a translucent, almost translucent plastic and cast in orange. And you can see that the chains are wrapped around the handles there as well. The skull handles are nice touch also. They just really look incredible. Of course, as you would expect, you can put them into his hand. The hands themselves are Surprisingly not as pliable of plastic as I was expecting them to be. I thought they would be a little bit more manageable. So you have to do a little bit of finagling to bend the hands, kind of like the fingers out, so that you can actually get the blades into his hand. Um, the thing with Kratos here is really there's so much, there's so much that you can do with him. The question then would be how would you necessarily display him? Uh, for example, you can also take the blades and you can put them into his back. And just want to get these in here. And they kind of just tuck inside this chain section here. Like that. 
and then you know you can have him displayed with that that is of course you know if you want to have like the Nemi and Cestus attached to his hands you can do that as well it's just a it's just a matter of preference really I would likely be displaying him with the Blades of Athena I mean that's just me if you want to display him with something a little bit bigger you can certainly incorporate that as well uh, but you know what let's just take the blades out and we'll just kind of put them to the side the other things we want to touch base on oh one other thing too uh, you get this also out of packaging as well just an extra plate as you can see there's a little notch in his arm you can just take the plate and attach it like so just like that giving you a, a just a fully realized look for Kratos so let's just get him to go right there I, I wish I had a stand for him I, I think that's the only thing I, I would say I wish a lot of these figures the ultimate figures especially Kratos here I wish he had a display stand but I've got a couple of circular stands that I'll, I'm sure will come in handy getting him to properly stand. I don't have necessarily an issue getting him to stand. His feet get a little problematic. I'll show you that, that in a second. But let's have a look at the ne Nemean Cestus, which are these sculpted lion heads. And they look really cool. They kind of look like they want to be posable, but they're not necessarily. It's just because they're slotted. You want to take Kratos' hands, and this is where you'd want to take this plate off. Just take Kratos' hands, and you're essentially just putting them through the, the socket areas of the line heads here. And again, you're just going to take the other one. They don't peg in. They don't clip in. They don't I thought might, when we first saw them, I thought what might have been the case is that they would have been sandwiched, that they would have been seamed right down the middle, and you would just take the halves off, and then you would just clamp it over top of the existing hand. Nope, no, you don't even do that. You just slide the hands into place, and uh, you know then he's got them in, in his hands. The, the real problem with this figure, if anything, is just because there's so much to him, he almost cries to have at least a second figure picked up. All the reason why I say that, we just take the maybe incestus out of his hands here. Put that to the side. The reason why I say that is because not only does he have a ton of different accessories weapons-wise, but he also comes with two interchangeable heads. Let's have a look at the existing default head that he comes with. And this is a more angrier looking Kratos. Just a super cool looking head sculpt. Very angry, grimaced teeth. He's got the scar down the one side of his eye. Loving the, also the way that they washed the, the white paint onto him. It looks like it is actually like a, not a paint, but it, it, the paint has been applied that it does look like it's been bonded to his skin, like the ashes have been bonded to his skin. It looks so very cool. Not, of course, overlooking the fact that the sculpt on the torso is incredible as well. So that is his default angry face. However, if you want something a little calmer, which to be honest, I might be gravitating a little bit more towards this particular head, which is a calmer expression of Kratos, than this head. It's my, just my own personal preference. You can go ahead and take the head off. Now, when you take the head off, you gotta make sure that you don't accidentally push your hand against the chain here as you don't want to push that down. Just pop the head out. It's a very narrow socket as opposed to being a bulbous circular socket on the end. And then you just want to apply the head. Now I would not necessarily say do this too often. Kind of pick one head and kind of go with it. I feel sooner or later when I'm pushing the head on, I would almost want to put a pressure on this and I don't want to crush this area, the little chain area there. There's the default look of Kratos with a more calmer expression versus that of his angrier self. But again, like NECA are sneaky. They, not only do they give you a great figure, but they give you kind of what warrants getting more than one of these, that if you displayed him calmer, you could do that. Or you can also display him a different version of him, get two of these, display one with the angrier look on his face. Just put that to the side. I, I do think I like this face a little bit more. Some of the things that we can touch base on is his skirt that comes down to the front. And by the way, underneath it, he's got his mesh that's wrapped around his thighs. 
little small little nods of detail that I do like. The chain's wrapped around the gauntlets of his hands, the wrapped up bandages of his hands as well. Big blood splattered across the shoulder armor plate that he's got there also. I guess we can also go ahead and add this piece back in. It's rubber, so we just tab it into place. There we go. Yeah, there's just, there's just a lot to look at with this figure. Like just the level of detail on the bottom skirt as well. Let's not also, of course, not forget an accessory that may not necessarily be something you add to the figure, but that is already on him. And that is the Boots of Hermes. Now these are a soft kind of rubbery plastic. I don't feel fearful at all that these will get caught, snagged, and get pulled off at all. But uh, by the way, it does, doesn't look like they are removable. If you were to remove them, they probably will not come, they will not easily go back into place. You'd probably have to glue them on. The same thing also can be said for the shoulder plate. I thought this might have been removable. It looks like it's pegged into place. If you were successful enough to pull it off, you would basically see just a big gaping slot where this should have gone. So I'm just, just going to leave it as is. Okay, so we've had a look at the accessories. We've looked at the sculpt, both of which phenomenal. Let's have a look at the posability on Kratos here. His head, as you've seen, is on a ball joint. Hinges up and down, left and right. Technically all the way around, but I'm not going to jeopardize doing that. The, the shoulders hinge out. The one shoulder, as you probably would expect, is very easy to move out. The other shoulder, there's enough gap clearance that you could probably move it out. I wouldn't move it out too much higher than that, just not adding extra stress to it. Uh, they do rotate all the way around, but again, wouldn't advise rotating this too much, that this doesn't end up getting popped off. He does have a bend in the elbow. He does have a rotation in the bicep, which gets a little more hindered on that side. However, this side, you can see clearly he has a rotation in the bicep. His rotation in the hand, which also hinges back and forth. A nice big torso crunch. I love that. Legs move back and forth, not hindered at all by his front skirt. He has a swivel point that's cut right underneath the wrap here. Double hinge knee. Hinge in the foot. And here's the little interesting thing. He's pegged on the underside of his feet, but also his feet are individually hinged. A nice little side touch. So I mean, if you had him in more of a lunging pose, providing, of course, you had a display stand, which I think would be a requirement for stuff like that, where you get a little more adventurous with posing options. But if you had a display stand, you could really go to town with getting this guy posed. It just, still, I guess it's been, this review's over, 20, uh, over 10 minutes in length, been playing around with him prior to that. I'm still really in awe of this figure. It's just really good. It's it's a true service that NECA has done to their, really for their fans, by giving us now a definitive, I may say ultimate, I'm going to say definitive, uh, God of War Kratos. I've owned tons of Kratoses. I think there was, I'm trying to think here, there was three, I think, Kratoses prior to the release of this guy right here. Other than the fact that the ones in the past have varied, of course, with Medusa's head, the armor has changed ever so slightly. I still feel like this could be a definitive Kratos. Uh, if you guys are looking for him, you can find him in local comic book stores. A lot of stores are stocking figures like this now, and Kratos currently is available. If you, if you could pick him up, and you have the opportunity to pick him up, do yourself a favor, pick him up. Don't even think twice, just grab him immediately and uh, take him to the checkout. I might even consider picking up, dare I say, a second one just so I could have them displayed differently. The Nemean Cestus, I could display them differently with the Blades of Athena, and I could display them differently with the two alternate heads. Sneaky, NECA, you're very sneaky, but sneaky in a good way. It would be leverage, it would be reason for me to pick up a second one of these. Uh, just an absolute, just love this figure, just love it. Might be a sucker because I just love Kratos, but at any rate, this figure is just a must have if you can find him. Today's Toy Spot, we were having a look at the Ultimate Edition of Kratos from God of War 3 from the folks over at NECA. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more Toy Spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching, as you always do. See you next time.